with Sanjay Poonen, head of SAP's mobile strategy. Let's go live to the podium right now for the introduction of Sanjay Poonen, CUBE alumni. We're going to try to get him on. Here's Sanjay right now. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Greetings from Sapphire, Nor now Orlando, and welcome to the Mobile Security Press Conference. I'm Bonnie Rothenstein, the head of mobile communications at SAP, and I'm pleased to have you all with us today. Three years ago last week, SAP announced the acquisition of Sybase and our intent to unwire the planet. Since then, SAP's momentum in the mobility marketplace has grown by leaps and bounds. Today, we're here to dive deeper into the mobile security landscape, and which is increasingly becoming a business imperative for companies large and small across the globe as they address the influx of devices in the workplace. The consumerization of IT and BYOD trends have put increasing pressure on the IT departments, where they have to provide not only enterprise-grade security to secure the devices, but also the content and the apps used on those devices. In just a moment, I will introduce Sanjay Poonin, president of SAP's technology solutions and head of our mobile division to get us started. I'd also like to wish a warm welcome to those of us who are joining us on the internet. Um, we will be taking questions throughout the press conference on the web, and you can send those questions to press at sap.com. With that, I'd like to introduce Sanjay to the stage. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. <clears throat> I am a relative newcomer to the mobile space, uh, having now run this division over the last 18 months, but Bonnie has been with us from the get-go, and I really appreciate her leadership in getting our message out. Uh, today is a very, very exciting day uh, for us as we continue down this transformation in unwiring the planet, and we want to share with you some very exciting news that we think is going to change the fundamental landscape of the industry. Quite frankly, I think rock the industry in some key ways. Uh, so let me just get right into some of the key aspects to set up why we're all here and what we're doing that's incredibly special. Uh, if you think about where we have set a vision in the marketplace to play out in enterprise mobility, we today are ranked and regarded by the analysts as a leader in enterprise mobility because we've specified a portfolio that is the envy of the industry, the most comprehensive, end-to-end, -end, focus on not piece parts but a solution. We believe the world of mobile device management is becoming one of mobile security, and that's really the biggest part of our theme today. We think that the roots of what we've done in analytics on the desktop or in big data on HANA stretches into the mobile device. There is no analytics of data if it's not relevant to the mobile device. Number three, we think that just the same way there were middleware and application servant companies that became dominant in the client server world, there's going to be mobile platform companies that help you build mobile apps in the mobile uh, apps world. We want to take the advantages of what we've done in industry-specific applications in the mobile world, in the uh, client-server world, to the mobile world, and build a whole range of mobile applications for retail, for banking, for consumer packaged goods. And then much of the world still works in a messaging infrastructure where we've had a lead. This entire business, our mobile portfolio, is today what we call our enterprise mobile portfolio. And we think some company is going to become the apple of enterprise mobility. And we think and we hope that company will be SAP. Uh, in each of these areas, our focus is to build best of breed yet integrated product. Uh, as we've done this, we've been very fortunate with the partnership of our customers to already in just two years, two and a half years, build a very large business. Just the first four parts of that business we reported last year was 220 million euro in license revenue. Just license revenue. Uh, and that was about zero two and a half years ago. If you add the messaging infrastructure business, it's significantly bigger than that. That would make businesses like mobile and HANA some of the fastest growing businesses in the industry. We have a thousand plus people dedicated to R&D across the company focused on mobile. We have today 6,000 customers and we had zero two and a half years ago. And really, the customer focus is really a big part of our success. We focused on a number of system integrators, VARs, and the one I wanted to point out here is OEMs. We have 70-plus MITO and OEMs. 
One big one we announced uh, two weeks ago at their conference, CA Technologies is betting their mobile device management product on ours. So this is an example of the business success we've had so far in the market. But we think this market is, is really poised for an even bigger opportunity if you go well beyond devices. One of the uh, you know, pleasures or agonies of living on the West Coast is you're in the worst time zone relative to any other part of the world. Okay? So I often get up at 5 a.m. Uh, uh, for a conference call with Europe. I get down to my, my uh, home office at 4.30, and I find that the conference call was canceled okay, by some very considered person overnight. Well, imagine if my alarm clock that's right next to my bed could communicate to my calendar and automatically set my alarm clock, because it's on the Internet, back by an hour. And then begins a day where all of my meetings are adjusted. The coffee maker is an hour later. My car tells my phone, for example, that the air pressure or the gas level is down a little bit. I get to work and my phone's notified that my refrigerator has milk levels that are low. I walk by a grocery store and it also promotes me the yogurt that's on sale at that very same grocery store, walks me to the aisle where the grocery store has that yogurt on sale. I use a promotion that's on my phone. And then on my way back home, I adjust the thermostat of my home uh, of my phone. This is a very exciting world of what we believe is the Internet of Things. And what is your phone today will be your refrigerator or your thermostat or your vending machine of tomorrow. This requires a whole bunch of security because when you send a print job to your printer, you might think the printer is right next door to you, but in fact there could be a malware sitting somewhere there on a machine transmitting your document to someone suspicious. This world is going to require us to think about mobile security in a whole new way. So as we prepared for this, we fundamentally rethought the landscape of mobile security. And we're here to announce something that's going to be pivotal, we think, in the reshaping of this industry. Specifically today, if you look at this industry, most of the tactical startup vendors are focused on a very niche problem. It's called mobile device management. It's an important problem. And we think this is something that needs to get started in, in terms of a bring your own device, but it doesn't end there. We think this problem, as it's being unveiled, needs to be done in an economical, reliable, and scalable fashion. And we're going to announce something that's absolutely pivotal in this mobile security area. But the next layer of what we think is going to be very essential is the managing not just of devices, but an explosion of apps on this iPad or your iPhone or Samsung device. And mobile application management is going to become just as important as mobile device management. In fact, probably more important because there are more apps than there are devices. On average, there are about 40 apps on every device. And there are more potential places where these apps could run. It could run on kiosks rather than just devices. We think there's also going to be an exploding world of content. If you're worried about content that's sitting outside the firewall on Dropbox or Box or SkyDrive, you might want to have a secure place where that content could be arranged uh, inside the firewall. You need a mobile content management solution that's scalable. You need a telecom expense management and a variety of other services that go well beyond just the ability to have piecemeal ways by which you handle telecom expense management. And eventually, as I mentioned, the phone of today becomes the vending machine or the thermostat of tomorrow. So when you rethink this world of mobile security, you look at this problem in a very different way than just very tactical mobile device management. And that's what we've done. We're reframing this as a mobile security problem. We believe that the types of DNA, the types of chops of companies that are going to be successful are not just companies who have a management view of mobile, but also a security view of mobile. Because if, if we think about threats in the laptop world, which required antivirus, we've not seen the type of threat that's going to happen in the mobile world in the world of cyber terrorism. So as we look at this, the first part of our announcement, we're very excited uh, today, is to announce a resell relationship with a very strategic partner. We're honored to have Adrian here in a second. Uh, we're going to have him on stage. He's the CEO of Mokana. And as we scoured the industry, we look for those startups that we could partner with that had a DNA that's very similar to what we were looking for in mobile security. We talked to our customers, and we found many of our customers were looking at them in the highest levels of security, the federal government, public sector, defense agencies, banks. And we found that this company 
small as they were, but having some innovative technology could really bring a lot of innovation to the big SAP. And as you know, SAP doesn't believe we can do it all ourselves. We love partnerships. Uh, it brings to us added DNA. It brings us innovation. And the good news is they're also in the Silicon Valley, very close to us. So the nature of mobile security and app wrapping, uh, Mokana does this, we think, better than anybody else in the industry. We will integrate this into our product and offer now to our customers, officially as of today, ready to go, mobile app management from SAP, uh, courtesy Mokana. Uh, the second aspect we think is going to be completely groundbreaking in the aspect that we're excited to announce about today. And I had to bring sort of this curtain metaphor because this thing is really, we believe, going to rock the industry to the foundation. Uh, we are announcing today a web solution completely in the cloud called SAP Mobile Secure. It is for the first time a scalable, reliable mobile device management solution at the lowest cost of ownership you will find on the planet, which I'll talk about in a second. But this becomes a solution where all of the capabilities of what you saw in Afaria is now capable in a cloud solution. Uh, with the capabilities of analytics that has always distinguished us, with the capabilities of scalability, with all of the mobile leadership that's made us number one in this market now available in the cloud. We think if you're going to manage a location of a billion devices in the world, you can't do this one off. You need to do this in a cloud infrastructure. We've learned a lot about the cloud at SAP over the last several years. Most of the vendors today are doing it in legacy, dinosaur, on-premise architectures. We're going to be the first to become the cloud solution for mobile secure, and here it is. So we're very fortunate as we do this. We also thought about the economics of how we're going to do this. And everybody today is sort of priced as sort of a very expensive airline flight. And we took a couple of lessons from Southwest Airlines and said, if we're going to do this, we're going to do this in the most economical fashion that's going to rock the industry. Now, I know price is not usually something that SAP prides itself in, but here we're making some changes and we're setting some new ground where we will offer today, effective today, a one euro per device per month mobile device management solution for all of the capabilities. This makes us officially the lowest cost of ownership solution by a huge mile. Okay? Uh, this solution will power all of what we believe many of the companies that need a scalable, configurable, solution without the worry of upgrades can do in the cloud. In the future, you will see the capabilities of HANA being able to appear there beyond just the analytics that we have. And as we did this, we decided to do this in partnership with a couple of companies that helped us do this. First off, we went to the company that is known as the leader in infrastructure as a service, because if you're going to be reliable and scalable at that price, we've got to make a profit margin, but we've also got to make sure that we're doing this on a reliable, scalable infrastructure. And the leader in infrastructure as a service is Amazon, AWS. We've had a strong partnership with Amazon. In a second, I'm going to share with you a video uh, from Andy Jassy, our good friend. Uh, Andy, and ja Andy and I were classmates at business school. We've had a strong friendship over the last several years. And it was a very natural place for us to look at their elastic cloud as a location for the most scalable infrastructure. We're also very fortunate to be partnering with Capgemini as we built out an engineered service solution with some of the IP that they brought in. They've had an existing relationship with Amazon. We had an existing relationship with Amazon. The triangle really made sense to make this a very, very scalable solution. So as we play this out, uh, before we get to the panel, I thought the best thing we could do is actually show you the solution. And the best person to do that at SAP is Ian Kimball. Thank you so, very Ian, much, take it away. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sanjay. Let's give him a hand. Mm, okay, well, perhaps after the demo. As Sanjay has said, ladies and gentlemen, what we're trying to do here is enable people to be able to manage all of the content, all of the apps, and the devices that they want to. Our largest Safari instance is over 100,000, and this is a beautiful, scalable solution we have here. So if we can switch to PC number one, all of you today can now start using the cloud edition of Afaria. All I'm going to do is to start it up. You need to go to sapafaria.com, and up will come this delightful screen here. Here you can see you have information about the cloud, you have information about the solution, what you can do with it. But what's interesting here is, unusual for SAP, is get a free trial. Ooh. 
Now, all of you can do this today. You can go home, you can get a free trial. All you need to do here is click on this button. You've got 30-day free trial. You can then get all of your sons and daughters and relationships device registered, and you can see what they're doing, perhaps. Okay? So anyway, I'm not going to do that now. I'm not going to fill in all... Well, it's not a big form. Obviously, we've already set up a quick trial, so I'm going to log in here now. I'm just going to simply log in with the one that we've done, SAP demo and the password. I'm going to simply log in, and hey, presto, here I am inside my console, and I can see everything I need to do here. Up here, I have my administrative console reports and enroll devices. So let's just see how easy is it for a company now to be able to enroll a mobile device inside their organization. Sanjay, do you have a device? Uh, I have a device. There's one up here. Yeah, but come off it. I know you have devices hidden all over you, so come on out with them. Okay. I got one in my pocket. Okay. Here we go. So that's an Android. That's easy. We can en enroll an Android device. Come on. Keep it. Come, come, come. Okay. I got another one hidden somewhere here. Okay. Keep them coming. Come on. Uh, right. That's a Windows 8 device. That's also no problem to in uh, do that one. Come on. Keep, keep, keep coming, that's coming. Uh, yeah. No. I know you've got more. Come on. Give. I think I got like one hidden. Somewhere. Oh, right, okay. All right, I got one here. Okay, yeah, you can put that, it there. That's Thank my you. private one. Right, no okay, one right, one. okay. You don't need to touch that. It was in my shoes. <laughs> Believe me, I'm not going to. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, we can enroll just about every single device. Android, um, iOS, uh, Windows 8, no problem. Let's have a look at how easy that is. I'm going to enroll a device as we speak. Now, here, I simply click here on roll, enroll device. I'm going to give it the username of, we'll call it Sanjay. Call it Sanjay, I don't know, nine. We'll give you a password and an email address, Sanjay. We'll do your personal one, punan123 at gmail.com. Gmail.com. And all I need to do now is to simply submit that. And what, oh, I've spelt the name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that was Sorry, embarrassing. Uh, let me Sorry, redo first. that. That's, yes, that wouldn't be the first time, would it? But anyway, so let me just enroll that device again. We'll just do that one again. We'll do call it Sanjay. We'll call it zero now. Sorry, American keyboard, which is why I'm having the problems. Sanjay Poonan, uh, 123, at gmail.com. And what will happen now is I will just simply then, now I've got it right, send that off there, please wait. Now what will happen is, let's switch okay. to the iPad. This okay. is my iPad. This and is I your iPad, so open get, up your just email. open my email. And you'll okay, see I got then, the trial. obviously, mail is coming in. Here it comes. We've got one. That right. No, no, wait, that's the one we did this morning. There should be another one arriving any second now. This is, of course, not the Afaria client that's at full. It is, of course, the lovely internet connection we have here. Okay, nothing coming. Okay, well, we'll use the one we did earlier all right, then, okay, shall we? Mine. So all you need to do is click on there. And my enroll. access, here yep. we go. Click on there. And then all you need to do here is click on the box saying enroll your device. Jeez, as simple as that, huh? And then you just then simply enroll your device, and then you'll need to install Infaria, and then click on that button, and hey, presto, it's then enrolled in my system here. So now, if we then switch back um, to the, uh, hold on one sec, if we switch back to the PC, what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at the administrative console here on the PC. What I'm going to do now is just log into that administrative console. And what we've done is we've done a lot of design thinking. So we've seen how easy it is to get a trial, how quick it is to enroll, and now to manage your devices. And we've used design thinking now to manage then how this would actually look. What we've done here is we have the devices, we have groups, which obviously then you can assign multiple either applications or users to in groups, and then you can apply policy to those groups to say, yes, of course, all salespeople can then have access to the CRM system. All managers can have access to management reporting. And lastly, down the bottom here, we have the server that that's actually running on that you can manage. Let's just have a look at how easy a policy is to actually uh, work with. So, for example, uh, you know, let's have a look at your device, Sanjay. We've just registered your device here. So we're going to have a look at a policy here. We've got lots of policies here. Have you been a good boy? Have you been selling a lot? Man, I can't believe that. Well, have you been well, selling a lot? I, I try to. You have I been selling. To. Okay. Then what we're going to do here is we've got a special policy for him, which is the Angry Birds policy. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is look at the Angry Birds policy here. And then what I can do now is through this policy, I can give him either then the full day pass to be able to play Angry Birds, or I can give him a five minute card to actually do that. So that's how we can manage devices inside an organization, by creating these policies, allowing people to access exactly the applications that our organization would like them to access. Okay? 
So finally, we've now shown enrolment, we've shown how easy a policy is, and finally, what we can also do is show reporting. Now, we can do reporting, obviously, straight from the PC, or we can also do reporting here from the mobile device. And if we switch now back to the iPad, you can see here an example then of one of the Afaria reports that everyone has available, available on the iPad, where I can then look through here, see then exactly what devices have been used, how many registrations have gone on, if there are any then, um, uh, if anyone's been doing anything they shouldn't do. All of this is reported here inside the mobile device. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That is it today. You can go out and log in and get the scalable platform that you can then use to manage the device. Any company can actually do this. You can see how easy it is to set up for a 30-day trial. You've seen how easy it is to enroll, to manage, and finally report on there. And that's the power of what we can do now with the new SAP in the Cloud Afaria offering. And we look forward to you writing lots of nice stories about it. Thank you very much. Ladies and gents, give it up for Ian Kimball. Thank you very much, Ian. Great. Now, you'll see something as simple as that last screen, for example, is the power of what we do in analytics, business objects, Mobi, predictive, all of that great stuff brought into the mobile world. It's not like we invented a new BI product. We took what we do in analytics very well and mapped it into the mobile world. Uh, we believe as a billion devices get added into this network, we will add HANA as the infrastructure underneath us, also sitting potentially in the cloud, where you'll get all the benefits of big data. So we're looking at this as an opportunity to not just innovate in mobile, but we think the world of big data, analytics and mobile, is the new oil of the economy. If you think about ERP, the R in ERP was resource planning. And SAP invented that resource planning for the industrial economy. We think the new information economy, the oil of this new economy, is going to be big data, analytics, and mobile, uh, and ways in which we can make something as simple as provisioning devices as uh, simple and easy to be able to do. OK, uh, we're going to switch uh, now to the, to the panel. But before we have the panel, um, uh, Andy Jassy from Amazon was not able to attend in person, but was very gracious to share this video. So let's play the video from Andy Jassy while we get the panel ready. Hey, guys. I'm sorry I can't be with you today, but I wanted to tell you how excited I was about the launch of Afaria powered by AWS. As many of you know, for years, we've been working closely with SAP to methodically certify all of their products to run in production on top of AWS. And that ranges from business objects and business suite and HANA One and now Faria. And customers are really excited about this. And we've seen adoption of SAP products on top of AWS really accelerate through time. And that's because customers want to be able to run the SAP software they love but do it on AWS. Because if you can run it on AWS as opposed to on-premise, you get to trade capital expense for variable expense. You get a lower variable expense than you can do on your own. You get perfect elasticity. You get to scale up seamlessly and shed resources when you don't need it anymore. And you get much more agility. You get to move faster. And with the way competitive environments are changing so quickly today, and with how many companies are adopting the cloud, if you're an enterprise not using the cloud, you're at a big competitive disadvantage. Now, Afaria on AWS is a very natural extension of our relationship with SAP. With the proliferation of mobile devices in the enterprise, it's a tough problem for enterprises to manage that. And if you have the opportunity to have a product that does the operational piece of that, it manages the security, it manages the upgrades, it manages the disaster recovery, it manages the infrastructure, that's really compelling, and that's what Afaria powered by AWS does. And it's a real game changer. It's faster, it's less expensive, it's easier to operate, and at a price of one euro per month, you have to take a look at that. So I want to thank you for listening to me. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference, and check out Afaria on AWS. It's really a game changer. Thank you very much. Let's welcome the uh, panel on stage. Adrian, Adrian Turner from Mokana. Dan Himmelman, uh, from the Enterprise Mobile Lead from Rubizol, Mike Pellegrino, CIO of Sun Products, and Fernando Alvarez, a Mobile Solutions Lead from Capgemini. Great. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, uh, Adrian, maybe I could start with you. Um, you know, I'd love to get a little bit of a sense from your perspective of um, mobile security and what sets you folks up um, as, you know, kind of a, a leader in mobile security how have you built the company? What's the DNA of the people in your company? And what have you done so far 
uh, in building this uh, great innovative startup? Great question. So uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, mobile application management. And uh, we think that management is really a misnomer. It really is a security problem first. So uh, Makana started out actually securing the Internet of Things. So the DNA of the company, um, we're a security software company. We understand the intersection of software and silicon. Um, we secure today everything from airplanes, trains, medical devices, smart grid infrastructure, and have a DNA that really centers around understanding the changing threat landscape and quality. Um, high bar in terms of quality. Uh, which we're now applying to the mobile application market. That's great. Thank you, Adrian. Dan, I'd like to go to you next. Lubrizol, we've obviously had a great relationship as a company. Um, you've been one of the early adopters, even as you looked at Afaria on-premise, at looking at it in this cloud. What was the reason for your interest in the cloud, and how do you think the promise of that could potentially help at Lubrizol as you've been thinking about the transformation of Lubrizol to a more mobile-centric company? Well, Sanjay, it's all about speed. And what we're trying to do in trying to, trying to keep up with, with our competition, keeping up with my business customers, is how can we offer solutions faster to my business customer? If I don't have to rely on the infrastructure that sits underneath the product, I relieve the time necessary of getting the implementation up and running, time to delivery in getting solutions to my business customers faster. But I don't also have to worry about the support and the costs of, of having this infrastructure component. I essentially focus my team on the things that add the highest value to my business customer. Awesome, thank you, Dan. Mike, I'd like to get to you next. You're obviously a you know, leading provider of laundry detergent, a number of different products that we use in our homes. Thank you. Um, well, and uh, you know, obviously for a company that's building those type of product, uh, as you think about the cloud strategy in your mobile arena, how have you thought about um, how it could transform us? And maybe you could tell, a little, a little, tell us a little bit also about your mobile strategy overall. Sure, we're just at the beginning of exactly what you had <coughs> presented before, Sanjay, in looking for a mobile device management strategy. But I'm also thinking about the future and where is this going to go? And we need to be able to wrap security around that and we need to be able to do uh, mobile application management as well. And so choosing the right uh, foundation for that is, is critical to me. I did not want an, an on-premise uh, version of a mobile device management product. And I also wanted to, to work with a, a partner who also had that vision for the future. Instead of relying on maybe just a mobile device management solution, there's more to it than that. And everything that you had presented before is, uh, is key for me and key for our company as we continue to roll out mobility. Great. Fernando, um, you obviously have done a bunch of work with Amazon prior to this, have had a good relationship with them, uh, have been watching obviously as a expert in the mobility space, a lot of what's going on. What have you seen uh, in the mobile device management market and how that's been moving increasingly to the cloud? First of all, thank you for allowing us to be here and be part of this. It's a dream come through. We have been working on this for a long time in terms of the concept. Security, 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 security. I think you underlined that today is what everybody is very much paranoid. And the, the other area is I don't want to have it on premise. Mm -hmm. I want to have an OPEX rate right, and a capital expenditure. And this is a perfect subscription model that takes care of that in a very scalable way. So the reliability of Amazon, the scalability of it, the partnership that we have forged together with three brand names and be able to scale it and deploy it fast Mm -hmm. in such a way that uh, we can manage uh, the expectations of customers. We have done some trials and we can easily put 6,000 devices in nine minutes up and running. That's a game changer. It completely changes the dynamic of the market. Fantastic. Mike, if I could go back to you, as you think about mobile devices that either you hand out or bring your own device strategy, how do you and your company think about security on there? Uh, secure email, applications on there, the authentication, sure. all of that. It's a fairly complex topic. It's a little more complex than what exists in the laptop world. Exactly. How are you thinking through the complexity of security? Well, you know, Dan and I were talking about this earlier. It's the, the, the cow is out of the barn already. So in terms of mobile devices, mobile applications, people using them for businesses, the proliferation of devices in your environment, is, it's already out there. And so what we need to do is we need to figure out the best way of putting security around that without stopping business. 
And of course, you need you know, the, the wrapper around that to be able to do it, and you need to be able to do it quickly. Prior to today, we were mostly a BlackBerry shop, and so you know, we, we had all the mechanisms in place through, through that solution, and now with you know, um, Apple platforms and Windows 8 and everything else, We need a, another product that can do that, that can wrapper the, the mobile device management as well as security, and then set you up for the future to be able to do application management Great. as well. Especially Adrian, I have a two-parter for you. One is maybe people perceive, you know, you need this level of security only for certain types of companies, very big companies or companies on the highest levels of security in the defense department or banks and so on and so forth. Is this applicable for companies in any industry and any size? Well, I think the reason people think that is that historically there's been a trade-off. Uh, you've had to give up user experience in order to get higher levels of security, and that's just not the case with our approach. So point and click, applicable to any application across Android and iOS, and uh, the, reality, the reality is, no, good enough is not good enough uh, anymore. So we see it in regulated industries, but a byproduct of the design is now you can secure an application on a device that you don't have management control of. So now we're talking about enabling a whole new class of use cases around the extended enterprise. Now I can serve as partners, customers, employees, contractors, all with the same solution. Uh, Dan, I'd like to co come to you, and I'm going to come back to you, Adrian, in a second. You're obviously doing more than, with mobile than just security. You're building out mobile apps, uh, some of them on our platform, and the real promise is apps. Tell us first off a little bit about what your device landscape is, iOS, Windows, Android, and what types of apps are you looking to build out uh, for your business so that your business is demanding from you? Well, we started about two years ago really <coughs> focusing on an iOS platform. The problem that we, we, we ran into very quickly was iOS across the enterprise made it very difficult to re replicate the experience that a business customer, an end user, would have at their desktop. It simply can't be done. So our focus now is broadening the range of devices that are available to our end users to give them selection. So by, by allowing them to now focus more on the availability of Windows 8 devices, which is, fits our environment significantly more. But in addition, expand it into even Android devices. The idea that what Luberzal is trying to push is choice. And the more we can offer choice to my business customer, the more they understand that we as IT are a true business partner. Great. Very quickly, Fernando and Adrian, <coughs> I'd like to talk about two use cases of mobile um, um, that may be applicable. First, Ad um, Fernando, with you. What are some of the application use cases of mobile that you're seeing? So clearly there's a mobile security tool use case, but what type of mobile apps are you seeing businesses asking you to build in your consulting system integration business? We see people want to get their feet wet slowly. We see a lot of requests from workflows. You're launching a product suite uh, tomorrow, today on Fiori. Uh, a lot of workflow application to test the platform mass volume of usage for executives. But we also see the more complex apps, you know, the field service technicians with Cyclo, applications that we are co-developing in direct store delivery, mobile sales and execution. So we see the whole angle, and all of them requires a very strong security element specifically with the bring your own device concept. So we see them all. Uh, one in more basketball in consumption and workflows, more other more laser focus on a particular functionality and role of a company. Great. Adrian, um, one last question before we turn it over for questions from the uh, floor. Uh, clearly, we talked a little bit of machine to machine and the Internet of Things, and this is something you guys have some deep roots in. What's a little bit of the vision of where this is going that you know, will help us sort of sleep at night knowing that the thermostat and the refrigerator is not going to be at risk uh, with the types of ways in which you guys have been thinking of mobile yeah. security in the future. So if you think about mobile security, I mean, the car is the ultimate mobile convergent device, right? So you have a lot of uh, <coughs> devices beyond phones and tablets that are attaching to application stores, business electronics, automotive, consumer electronics. Um, so first of all, there's an opportunity to secure those applications. And then secondly, you said it really well, that the phone is effectively becoming a remote control for the Internet of Things. Mm -hmm. And uh, on that phone is an application that's going to be a control point for these connected devices. So it's another opportunity to apply the same technology to a new market. Mm 
-hmm. Gentlemen, the customers, I got to ask you one question. Have you ever seen SAP with a price point of this kind <laughs> in your lifetime of dealing with us? Never. Never seen him go public. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> no, that might be a statement of our discounts. But no, no, no it's, it's, it's good. The pricing is excellent. Good, okay. Uh, I guess I'm welcoming Bonnie back um, on stage um, to facilitate questions from the audience this or one. from the web channel. So, Bonnie, take it over. It's one in the back. Right? Okay, great. So we're now going to join, start the Q&A portion. What I'd like to ask of everybody in the room Please wait to be recognized. We do have mic <coughs> people with microphones in the back. Raise your hand. We will get you started. If, I, if you would, please stand up, introduce yourself, and then ask your question. And then once again, for those on the web, you can send your questions to press at sap.com. We have one back here. Thanks. Uh, Lori McKay from SA, SMB Group. I have two questions. The first one's really quick. Is um, mobile secure the same thing as Afaria Cloud? Very good. So we've branded the umbrella offering for that entire four bubbles, mobile security. And the umbrella offering is mobilesecure.com. Afaria is our brand name purely for the MDM component, the mobile device management component which we're offering in the cloud. We expect many of those other services will also show up as cloud services. Afaria is the product name for that one small bubble I talked of as the starting point, offered now at one euro per device. Mobile Secure is the brand name for the entire offering. Okay, that helps. And then my more complicated question, I guess, is how do you, um, you know, the, the customers up there or, or the partner, how do you help companies, you know, they are all using BYOD policies, but managing the devices that maybe the customers actually bring in so that you can reward them with Angry Birds or take it away or whatever. Is there a whole like art and science to that? And, and how, do you, how do you coach other companies to do that in a good way? So if I could paraphrase, maybe we'll start with the customers first and then you know, either Fernando or Adrian, welcome that. How do you think about bring your own device where you know, private citizen X who works for you wants to play Angry Birds, but you also want to put business apps on there? It, from my perspective, I'm okay if they want to play Angry Birds. It's a mobile device. It's their personal device. They're bringing it into our, um, our environment. What I want to be able to do is I want to be able to control the business applications, the business use of the phone, um, and whatever you want to do personally is, is okay with you <coughs> to a point. If someone brings in a device and they jailbreak it, as an example, then I will not allow that on our network. And so we're going to use the, um, uh, we'll use the mobile device management to be able to do that effectively, but I don't want to take away the, person, uh, the person's personal use of, of that device. I do want to make sure that they use it very effectively for business. Dan, any quick perspective? Um, yeah, I, I think it's, it's interesting that we're, we're kind of looking at Angry Birds as a, as a potential reward <laughs> mechanism. I, that's that's a, a great theory. The, the thing that to, to realize is BYOD adds a comp a, an element that goes beyond just the device. There's multiple facets to it. I think what we, what we see here is not just the device management, but the security component. Mm -hmm. These things need to work together. The important element in a, in a BYOD, especially understanding privacy laws and security, and, and that these are personal devices, it's encapsulating what needs to be containerized, mm -hmm. such that I can control that, I can manage that, and give that, you know, give comfort to my management to say, I understand what's going on with that device, and I have the ability to pull that back. So these components all work together. Next question, Bonnie. You got one right here. Hi, I'm Sapan Panigrahi from SAP. Um, I have a question on the area of uh, voice activation and voice recognition, because if you're talking about the mobile phone as the ultimate remote, then you also have to look at safety. How I'm going to unlock my phone, I'm driving and things like that. So any thoughts in the area of use of voice recognition, anything in the area of security? Adrian or Fernando, you yeah. got some perspectives on any of them? So, uh, so yeah, I mean, there are, in, in some segments of the market, voice signatures are used as uh, a second type of authentication. Um, and and I, I think there'll be other types of authentication, biometric authentication, that will become more pervasive as well. Um, but the example of locking a phone while you're driving down the road, what we're really touching on is context intelligence right. and context-aware policy and policy enforcement. And uh, that is an area that we're very focused on and that, that our product really allows. 
Fernando, any perspective? I completely yourself? agree with his assessment. And the good thing about it is that the combination of the agreement plus what Afari offers in terms of features take care of it. And going back to her question on bring your own device, it's a combination of the features that we know we have from a broader perspective, but there is policy. There is, I mean, what do you want to do as a CIO in terms of policy, in terms of roles and function, mm -hmm. and what do you want to have in that corporate side personality of the device? So it's a combination of the two. The good thing about it is your product takes care of it from a technical perspective. The policy, it goes from customer to customer. That's right. Bonnie? Question back here. Hello, Maribel Lopez with Lopez Research. Uh, we've talked about BYD, so assuming that we have the mobile device management taken care of, assuming we have the security taken care of, what are the next issues we need to tackle in mobile to move forward? What will you be working on next? Let me start with the customers. Uh, policy. It's, it's a lot around policy. Understanding that there's, there's, there's more facets to it, that things are not just the, the hardware. As in, who's going to pay for that? You know, are there going to be issues around, you know, stipends and the reimbursements and so forth? That triggers a whole, you know, avalanche of additional issues and, and topics. So it, to me, it's not just the technology anymore. You have to answer everything in a holistic view, and you have to look at all of it at once. It is very large. Mm. Mike, any perspective? Yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, <laughs> we've spent just as much time looking at the technology and working on the policy um, for the company. And I agree as far as you know, whether you're going to offer a stipend or use cases, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. It is, uh, it's a tremendous amount of work and it varies by company. Um, and at the end of the day, again, the, the people who are bringing in their own devices, you know, want to do business, but they also don't want you to, to lock, you know, get locked out of their, their personal use of the phone, nor do they want any sort of privacy issue. So there's, um, there's a lot of legality around that and human resources has been involved and it's, that part of it is a lot of work. I would just add, Maribel, that part of what we're seeing from our customer base as they've taken care of the infrastructure aspect of mobility, security, provisioning, uh, application management, uh, it frees them up to start thinking about the strategic apps that can touch their customers okay. and their customers' customers. And the more that we unlock mobility to not just touch the inside of the firewall, but our customers and our customers' customers, a B2B scenario or a B2C scenario, uh, you really start seeing the power of mobility unlock new types of users you've never had. Um, um, we had uh, the discussion about the Cisco Foods use case that was visible on the restaurant Impossible Show on the Food Network. This is a beautiful B2B app built by uh, us with Cisco Foods to allow restaurant owners to have a B2B relationship with Cisco Foods. We have a number of mobile banking customers where in developing countries uh, they now have a relationship with their consumers for millions of consumers. So I think the true promise of mobile, just like the Internet of Things is going to unlock machines, is to get as many of the billion people in the world who have mobile devices to be able to use their mobile apps to interact with the business. If I could just add to that a little bit, and it's especially true for the millennials. I mean, as Absolutely. we saw this oh, morning, live that, on mobile. that's the way people really would like to work, and we have to enable that through the applications that we deploy on mobile. Mobile. Okay, Adrian, quick perspective. Just real quick, we, very specific example of a big bank that we're working with now. They wanted to roll out 65 mobile applications last year. They rolled out one because that one meant the security baseline of the bank. Hmm. So what we see is this tension between IT and lines of business. The line of business want to create new application customer experience and partner experience, but IT is responsible from a compliance perspective. And uh, I think together um, with the solution, we're going to be removing that bottleneck. Yeah, Fernando, quickly. Yeah. Just put in perspective the <coughs> announcement we're making today. One of the biggest obstacles companies have is having this infrastructure in place. Spending a lot of time mm -hmm. comparing with people. What do you have? What is the price point? We came to the recognition that this is fundamental and it's such a fundamental thing that we needed to offer in such a way that it's attractive to everybody to get over in the decision making process. So we can go then to what the next step is the mobile platforms and the mobile applications that will take care of their pain points. A mobile infrastructure is just a platform. But now they need to do business and the mobile applications and the platform is the next thing. In conjunction with security, mobile content management, and obviously mobile device management. If we can provide with this announcement a way that you can do it simply, quickly, and cheap, 
then we can focus our attention and energies on the value of the solution that is going to take care of their business problems. And that's where we're aiming at. Well said. Thank you. Bonnie. We have a question from the back. Yes, uh, Steve Hilton from Analysis Mason. Thanks for the announcements today. I wanted to come back a little bit to some of the things that you've talked about with machine to machine and Internet of Things. So, uh, you know, I think really this sort of Internet of Things world, there may be some cases where the phone becomes, I think you called it the control point, Adrian. But I think really a lot of the growth in M2M and Internet of Things are devices that are not phones. Right. And they're not tabs, completely different. They're not using those OSs that you're showing up on the board today either. And the applications or the multiple applications that reside on a unique piece of hardware you know, are extremely different. Whether it's cardiovascular disease monitoring or smart metering or whatever it is. Talk to me a little bit about that world and what you think these solutions will do in that kind of world. Adrian, why don't you start and then I'll offer a perspective. Yeah, so on the other side of our business, the, the, the OEM side of our business, we have a software framework that runs across 2,450 combinations of operating system and CPU. We're in all of those devices, including devices that don't have operating systems. So the set of challenges around those devices is really around securing the remote management <coughs> interface to the device, tying identity to a device, securing data in motion, and you also want to be able to trust the data coming from these devices. Because to your point, and to Sanjay's point, when there's 50 billion devices, there's a lot of automation. And you can't automate if you don't trust the data uh, moving between the devices. A couple of quick perspectives we would have. If you think about uh, a vending machine as being a generalized bigger case of a phone, there's two things you would want to do with that vending machine. One is securely provision any, the operating system on that machine with something as sophisticated as our mobile secure portfolio. That's one. And think of that as being able to protect that from being a, a, a potential for malware or some virus or whatever have you. But the second opportunity is to take data out of that vending machine, if you would, supplement it with, with third party information like weather information that tells you tomorrow is going to be a hot day, and then keep your supply chain ready to stock that vending machine for any hot day in Texas. And any consumer packaged goods company that serves drinks will tell you the difference between a good quarter and a great quarter is being able to get drinks to a vending machine. So what we would also see as an opportunity is taking the data out of those devices. We have some very sophisticated event processing data that we got from Sybase, complex event processing data. Feed that into HANA, mix it with some third party information like weather information, and now make a predictive use case to the consumer packaged goods company of how to stock that vending machine. So then that vending machine becomes one that you both secure and interrogate for data. And this you can see is a good use case of mobility meets big data and analytics in this world. And that's really why we think and our focus as a company on big data and analytics on mobile and cloud really gets us very ready than just companies who are focused on a very tactical MDM problem. They're not going to be able to really understand what big data and analytics are. Big data and analytics companies that don't have the, the roots on mobile security won't understand how to secure that, that, that device. So it's a very exciting opportunity we think ahead. If I may add to your question, and this is the reason why we're doing what we're doing today. In order to tackle or the different OSs that are not <coughs> the iOS and the Androids and the Windows 8, you need somebody with the amount of R&D to keep up with it. And you need somebody with the sector knowledge to be able to talk the same language of what you're implementing. And that is the commitment that we're seeing here to get there. And that is why we all got excited about the offering because this is a stepping stone to that, that direction. And the combination of the sector knowledge and the R&D that is behind the product to get to that level is what is going to get the answer to your question regarding the different operating systems that are embedded in all these machines. Okay, I think we've got time for two more well, questions. We've, we've Bonnie, go ahead. Got more. Great, thank you. for uh, Chris Hazelton from 451 Research. Uh, this question is for Sanjay and Adrian. Um, can you confirm that uh, the relationship between Mokana and SAP is exclusive from SAP's standpoint for MAM? And then also talk about how it's being deployed and sold, so where it's being bundled with Afaria and then where it's not, and kind of what are some examples, uh, maybe from gentlemen from Capgemini, if you could talk about examples <coughs> of where it's being used or will be used. Thank you. You know, we have a, a, a very, as we looked at this market, we looked at all the possibilities uh, in this and really picked a very strategic partner. 
Nothing at SAP, and I would expect the same Mokana is ever exclusive because legally we're not allowed to do those types of things. We allow free market, but we believe when you build a partnership, you can only do strategic partnerships with a few, often only one. So we uh, looked at this and very carefully we talked to our customers. And, you know, we're very guided from our 200,000 customers to ask them where they are seeing a market move, and particularly in the public sector and banking. Uh, those were two sectors which are highly regulated. Healthcare is another one where we heard a lot of very good feedback on Mokana. One customer was very specific not to call them out to saying of all the companies they looked at and they had done benchmarks again, these folks had, had uh, stood up above the crowd. So that type of endorsement coming from a customer is a very strong one. Uh, we see two points of intersection. One is with Afari and mobile device management. And that's clearly one because we see device management becoming tactical over time and commodity and app management really becoming a much bigger opportunity. The second, though, is our SAP mobile platform where you develop apps. We have an application development platform. You could see uh, Mokana's integration there to allow a developer to very naturally be able to avail of their secure services. Adrian, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our, our philosophy is few partnerships and deep partnerships as well. And uh, we've put the full weight of the company and will continue to put the full weight of the company behind the SAP relationship. Yeah, yeah. We actually have a question from the web from R. Hirsch on Twitter. He's asking if Faria Cloud based on AWS, who deals with the support? So we have taken on the support services. We're assisted in, uh, by Capgemini also. But support services are just going to be handled just like SAP's cloud. This is an SAP offering. It happens to to run on AWS as an infrastructure service, but as SAP is standing behind the support of it, just like we have uh, support for other cloud products. Uh, we feel fortunate to be able to be assisted by a lot of the engineering uh, that, that Capgemini had been building with Amazon over time that makes some of those support services significantly easier. Uh, and that's an investment they've been making with Amazon, and that will help us uh, make some of that support even faster. But SAP is not new to the cloud business. We've talked about the fact that at the end of this year will be a billion euro, uh, you know, roughly run rate getting there, cloud type of business, and our goal is to get to a two billion euro. So we're not novices of the cloud. We've been doing this now for a while in other areas, HR, um, travel and expense, procurement with Ariba, CRM and so on. We just think in the mobile device management, everybody's been on premise with dinosaur architectures. We want to do this in a more modern fashion in the cloud. Great. We've we have an additional question over here. Yeah, hi, Vishal Jain, 451 Group. Um, so just a quick question on the, the SAP Afaria on-prem versus um, cloud-hosted private instance versus the SaaS kind of all of it, um, open to all. Would you maintain uh, the, the, the instances of these two and how are you going to uh, talk question. to your customers? Mm -hmm. So the good news about this, and this is the beauty of the Amazon Elastic Cloud, it's one code base. We're not doing three different products, one for uh, on-premise, one for private cloud, one for public cloud. One code base. The beautiful aspect of an elastic cloud is you can scale out an infrastructure, make it one that's multi-tenant ready, mm -hmm. uh, do analytics on it. We do, however, believe that the pace of how we can do things in the cloud will be faster. It clearly is. We can do things in days and weeks. Clearly, when we deploy things on-premise, you're limited by how fast a customer can upgrade or may want to upgrade. So we expect that we will have a lot of innovation happening on our cloud product, and then periodic drops where that will make itself also into a private cloud or an on-premise. We're going to be ambivalent. We're not saying that this has to be cloud and nothing else. There's going to be a number of countries uh, and companies in certain countries who say, we're not ready for the cloud. The good news is we have a product. We've had a product. We're market leading in that category. Will we think as this moves forward, the cloud's going to be the way to go uh, in the long term, and certainly in the next three to five years, that's going to be the accelerant uh, in this business. I don't know if, from the customer perspective, very quickly, how do you guys view the cloud in general, and then maybe specifically, uh, are you guys open in your customer deployments to a cloud deployment? Uh, it doesn't have to be just in mobility. Uh, Dan and then Mike. Uh, Lubrizol has taken a, a, a viewpoint of moving more toward a cloud as a, as a solution. As we look at different requests from the business and as we kind of identify what the solutions are, we look at the, the pros and cons of each. But we are heavily moving more toward cloud-based simply because it allows us to move faster, even to become more innovative because, for example, 
that cloud solution might not be our long term, but it's, it's a whole lot easier to spin up something in the cloud, take a look at it, run through an evaluation, even get it installed as a pseudo production, kick the tires on it to say, yes, that makes a whole lot of sense, versus buying all the, all the servers, all the architecture, um, and, and essentially moving significantly slower. Mike, your perspective on the cloud? I agree, everything that I'm looking at now in terms of uh, new deployments would cloud first, and uh, if I have to, I'll go to on-premise, but it, uh, there's really no glory in building infrastructure these days, so. That's a very good perspective. I would say I would like cloud first, mobile first is what we're finding exactly. in many of our use cases. Bonnie, do we close or? I think we're ready to close, so I just want to thank all of you gentlemen for being with us today. It's really great and refreshing to hear about all the new innovations taking place in the mobility security space. And for those of you in the room, I would just strongly encourage all of you to take a chance to head over to the mobile campus while you're with us here in Orlando. So thank you very much. Good, thank you. And if you have further questions, feel free to come up here. We've got Senthil here, who's the product owner for this area. He'd be delighted. If you didn't get a question answered, just come up here and we'll be happy to share that with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Local community, folks that have been affected here on the Lower East Side really need help. Intro package or not? We're going to try to okay. help every person that we can today and we're going to just keep sending out. Okay, we're back here live at SAP Sapphire. This is SiliconANGLE's continuous coverage of Sapphire Now, exclusive coverage. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the ceiling from the noise. We just heard from Sanjay Poonan and their, and their team introducing new technology around security and mobile. Obviously, we've been covering Sapphire. This is our fourth year uh, with theCUBE since theCUBE was born. And it's fascinating to see the mobility story evolve for SAP. And what Sanjay Poonan talked about basically was mobile device management extending out to a whole nother level, content management, security, and ultimately control. And what we heard today was an announcement where for one euro, I actually mentioned euros, this is a little international crowd here, for one euro per device, an enterprise can manage it, all their devices, for one uh, euro per device. That's the lowest cost of ownership in the, in the uh, history of the web as we know it today and the world of uh, mobile. So that's a great, great coup for, for SAP. The other uh, notable thing is that he ran a video from um, Andrew uh, Jassy, who's a classmate of his from Harvard, who's the senior vice president at Amazon and runs Amazon Web Services. We were at Amazon uh, AWS, talking about that uh, last uh, two weeks ago. Dave Vellante and theCUBE was in uh, San Francisco for the AWS Summit. And behind me, they're uh, coming off the podium. Press conference, again, mobility, security, the big story. A lot of Q&A from the analysts and the press here and the global press corps, all wondering, is this wrapper strategy going to work? That is something that has people uh, pause. The conversation has always been build mobile devices. Now we're hearing that only rebuild a few core uh, applications and put a wrapper around everything else. That's one uh, aspect of the announcement. The other one was this notion of actually controlling users' actions, putting uh, sharing limits, only using Angry Birds or Facebook a certain kind of amount of time. This essentially brings us back to the world of time sharing in my opinion. Not sure that's a good trend, but certainly from a command and control standpoint, a large enterprise can give their consumers a sneak peek, but more importantly allows them to look at the activities and manage and monitor all those behaviors. So, this is theCUBE, this is our flagship program, this is the mobile press conference. You know, and my, and my take on that, and we talked earlier with Jeff Kelly here and, and David Floyer, is that mobility is an extension of their existing strategy. In memory, fast HANA database, cloud and mobility is key. Business analytics running at the speed of business is the key, and that's essentially what they were talking about. And the big notable announcement here was Afaria, which is their cloud for mobility, mobile device management, and it's run and built on Amazon Web Services. Key questions come up, who's going to support that? It's an SAP service, as Sanjay Poonan said, and Sanjay Poonan is a CUBE alumni, and we're happy, happy to, to amplify his vision. He's got a new, new job as the head of mobile past 18 months. He's doing a great job, and again, classmate with uh, uh, Andrew Jassy of, of uh, Amazon Web Services. So that is the breakdown of the mobile press conferences. We're going to have more wall-to-wall -wall coverage here. We're going to have EMC on, we're going to have a variety of other guests, and we're going to bring back in the Wikibon analysts to kind of break down what's going on. But ultimately, this is going to be the Internet of Things. The Sanjay Poonan team up there talked about, they had Capgemini, a couple companies up there, startups pointing about the future, and this is about the Internet of Things. And we're going to break down the Internet of Things, the industrial internet as General Electric calls it, and a slew of other um, commentary right after this short break. We'll be right back with the Wikibon analysts to break down the mobile 
cloud, social, analytics, and the Internet of Things, and the industrial internet. We'll be right back after this short break.